So I hope you enjoyed my concept session. So I will move to the next session, which is our uh, guest speaker from all the way from India to here to share his knowledge about how to maximize his Office 55 experience for all of you. So let me introduce Dr. Nitin, and then he will introduce uh, another 20 minutes to show you how you can actually use your beloved office in your PC or any other device. So let me introduce uh, Dr. Nitin, and it's your time. Thank you. How many of you attend my session before? OK. How many customers here? Not partners or service providers. How many customers? All right. I have 15 minutes. Actually, she's mentioned 20, but I know it's 15. Okay. What I'm going to talk about is how to use Office 365 platform and maximize the value. So how many of you already are on Office 365? Any SKU, E1, E2, P1? How many of you use Office 365 as of now? All right, not a big number. Never mind. So when I say return on investment, there are two things we do. We invest as an organization, and we invest as an individual working for the organization. Organization has paid for it, but what are we spending on it? Our life our day-to-day -day work time on office. So what both of them want is this. What both of these entities want is one common thing. And what is that common thing? Growth. Everyone wants to grow. Company wants to grow, organization wants to grow. Nobody has to teach you that. You want to do that all the time. Now, as previous speakers have already mentioned, Office 365 is all these things put together. So now we want to grow, and these components we have, how are we going to put to enter together and help us grow faster? That is called return on investment in very, very simple terms. So let's go further. Oops. As it is, I'm five minutes late. Give me a minute. Let me reboot. Fortunately, I am in good company. A lot of infra people here. <laughs> Now, which one? Anyone? Which one should I use? Yeah? Don't worry, that was a presentation. Come on. What fooled you was the progress bar. Right? That was just a PPT. What people love most is the present of failing on stage. Am I right? <laughs> but right now, I seem to be failing for some other reasons. <laughs> I don't know. It's switching. Anyway, um, what I'm trying to show you is I have done sessions like this for lots of people, 230,000 people. Why is it switching? This I didn't do, by the way. So was tested today morning, but never mind. A lot of countries I've done sessions like this for, but they learned a lot of things from me. What did I learn from how people use Office tools? And that includes client as well as server, link, SharePoint, Exchange, everything. So what did I learn in the process? Every action we perform using Office is, one word is missing. Can you fill in the blanks? Any guesses? The work is getting done, no, no doubt about that. But the way we are doing the work, how is it? One, one single word. Unfortunately not, it's inefficient. <laughs> and trust me, when I say this, I really mean it. It's not a joke. This is based on so many sessions I've done and what I've seen in life. It doesn't matter which industry you are from, how experienced you are in your domain, how knowledgeable you are. When it comes to office, we have learned it by trial and error. So even though your method works, that does not mean that may be the best method. That's the problem. And Microsoft is adding more and more features every version, every month nowadays with Office 365. And we simply have not caught up with it. So we have two kinds of business. We have core work, which is the core business, and what we do with Office. So typically, we spend around three to four hours on Office. I don't want to waste time taking a poll right now. Just trust me on that. Think about yourself. 
So 50% office related work, 50% core work. Core work means what? The ERP, accounting, the core business activities. Now the core work is already well managed. Do you understand what I mean by that? Well managed means either it is automated or it is, if it's not automatable, someone has to do it, but you're not doing it, it is outsourced. And it's anyway optimized, someone is auditing it, someone is doing some improvement all the time. That's 50% of work. But when it comes to office, there is no review, no standardization, no audit. As long as people get it done, nobody cares. So now what happens? 50% is efficient and 50% is inefficient. Efficient plus inefficient is called inefficient. <laughs> so is this a good news or a bad news? Trust me, inefficiency, if you ignore, it's a bad news. You didn't even know. Now that you know about it, you will act on it. So the fact that we are inefficient in every aspect of our life when it comes to office is the best news you have ever heard. Because now that you know about it, you can do something about it. And whatever you do about it, it's going to lead to improvement. I don't have time to show you too many demos, but just trust me on this. I'll show you a couple of demos if possible. But this guy is not behaving nice right now. So, coming to the next topic, we have another gap there. From a business point of view, whoever signed the check for getting the technology, those people who own the business, the CEO, CFO, chairman, whoever it is, have these words in their mind. And as IT people, we have these words in our mind. There is no connection between the two. Do you agree? And that gap is leading to ineffective utilization of technology. People in the green side want that technology to get those things done, but we can't communicate in their language, they can't communicate in our language. And that gap is compartmentalizing entire effective utilization of IT, including office. So the secret is small little incremental improvement, what's new in this version, let's do this little bit, let's do one phase SharePoint, one phase link, that's not going to work. We need a complete revamp and that's what Microsoft calls this as reinventing productivity. My earlier speakers mentioned that in a very nice way. But what does it actually mean? Every user has to reinvent every action we do and recast it in a new methodology. That is what we mean, reinvent. Small little incremental improvement is simply not going to work. So you have to relook at what we do and do it in the best possible way using the current platform. So I give a small demo for Word. All of us use Word, am I right? So does this happen sometimes? There is one row which is broken across pages. One row here, this is the same row, but it is broken across pages. How do you put it down? You press enter, enter, enter. Some people do split tables. Some people make two tables and just make a small font size in between. Whatever you do in those contexts is inefficient. It may work, but it is inefficient because in this case, you are helping Word rather than Word helping you. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to understand, Microsoft has noticed all these problems 20 years back and they have provided a solution. That solution is right in front of you, but we never looked at it. That solution looks at you every day. That's called auto fit. But that button has no voice to tell you, please don't waste your precious life, click on me. <laughs> so it's up to us to be proactive and then click on it. And then we have to do the job correctly, but wait, if I do something to this row, another row may break. So what do you do? Select all the rows first and then go to properties. And then what you thought was a bug is actually a feature. <laughs> this has been there for 18 years. Nobody knows. <laughs> now that we have got it done, we have another problem. This header is not going to the second page. Tables are bound to break across pages. Again, we copy paste there and help Word. Don't do that. Word knows that. So keep your cursor in the first row. Go to layout and say repeat this row. Remember there is rows, S. That means multiple rows can be done. If I had not mentioned this lifelong, you would be repeating only one row. <laughs> <coughs> now that we have done this, you will realize that this is very nice. And rather than doing it as a retrospective step, every time I create a new table, might as well select a nice design for it. And while the table is small, I can proactively prevent these problems by saying repeat header rows. And while the table is small and empty, go and say allow rows to break across pages. Don't do that. That makes life much easier. Now the issue is every time you do this, you'll have to do every time new table. And repetition means inefficiency. So now what do you do? We have found a good method, but even that is inefficient. 
Normally, we would live with it because this is much better than what junk we were doing earlier. But now we are getting addicted to efficiency. So even smallest of repetition, you shouldn't take it lying down. That's the thought process of being efficient. And if everyone has it, everyone grows faster. So now you have gone to insert before, you have gone to table before, but nobody looked at quick tables because nothing happens quickly when it comes to office. It is all a struggle, correct? So now, even if you go there, there are some random calendars. You say, I don't need it. Nobody looked at the last option. That's called save selection to quick table gallery. And then we call it my standard table or whatever name you want to give it. And next time in any application, any document, I mean, if you need exactly the same table, you go to insert table, go to quick tables, and that table is there for you. This is a blank one. You can create as many as you like shell tables, which can be reused for you. Now, this is good, but this is going to help only me. If my colleagues have to use it, if my entire organization use it, I have to teach them, and then I have to, everyone has to recreate those tables. That's a boring thing. So when we saved it, it went into a file called buildingblocks.x, which is not the normal template. Now, you can put that by pooling all the reusable tables across the organization, put it in SharePoint, map the SharePoint library as a drive in the login script, and use a group policy setting which has building blocks workgroup path. And once that is done, every person in the organization with no extra effort gets reusable tables. Do you just understand what we looked at in a few seconds? We started with a small little irritating problem which everyone has in Word, and then we went to enterprise level. That is the depth of office. We have not even started thinking about it, leaving, leave aside utilizing it to the fullest extent. That what, that's what I mean, reinvent everything you do. OK, let's go further. So where was I? Now, there's another thing which has never been looked at called branding. Everyone spends millions of dollars, depending on the company size, on branding, visiting cards, banners, logos, stationery, all that. But when a document goes from you to customer, that document uses branding provided by the default template in Microsoft. Where is the branding gone now? Where is the marketing uh, cohesiveness of corporate communication gone now? So from six, 2007, Office has been giving you branding capabilities. That's called theme. I don't have time to explain what theme means, but in very brief, it has a collection of 10 colors, two fonts, and look and feel. All that can be customized and packaged as per your branding guidelines. And then your documents look same. This is a PowerPoint presentation using the same thing. This is an Excel file using the same thing, theme, and this is a Word document using the same theme. So if this is matching your branding, it enhances your corporate presence and gives a better feel of professionalism. Obviously, these templates have to be developed, and of course, you pro process them and store them in SharePoint, as I mentioned earlier. That's where we are utilizing the whole platform in a more effective manner. Now. There is one more problem now. We have, yes, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but with Office 365, you saw there were so many logos, correct? You may purchase them, but users, do they know them? Are they using it effectively? That's the next question. Earlier, for 20 years, people were happily collaborating with each other by sending CCs with attachments. Am I right? Because the only method of communication, other than physically making someone sit in front of you, was to send a mail. That continues to be there today. But now we have more options. We have Outlook, SharePoint, OneDrive, Link, Yammer. Now we have groups. And is the person happy? People should be impressed. And they should be taking autographs from IT people, saying, very nice, sir. You gave me so many options. I, have, I am in love with you. <laughs> are they doing that? No. What are they doing? They are. Is this called empowerment or confusion? And to make matters worse, we do it in a phase manner. Only first phase is action, second phase is SharePoint, third phase is Link, fourth phase is Yama. People randomly attend some trainings, and nobody tells them one simple answer. Now that there are seven ways of doing it, which one to use when? We have seven methods of doing, but which one to use when has never been told. Individual pockets of training has happened, so people gravitate to their comfort zone, which is called email. So now that they are so happy with a 50 gig mailbox, earlier you were given them a stingy 500 MB, now they are so happy with that big mailbox, so nobody uses SharePoint. What's the point? So this is the method of improving utilization, not by just giving random ad hoc training that too optional. This is mandatory learning. These are left side what people do on a daily basis, and the right side is recommended tool usage. 
this authoritative guidance is never given to users. That's why technology comes and goes, and this is not return on investment, rather this is return on ignorance. So what does Microsoft do? Microsoft, all of you are developers. Microsoft is a very big developer. So they look at our needs as a user. We call it use case. Then they analyze, then they do coding, and they give you features. Now they have given a box full of features, 12,000 features. What do we do with it? Nothing. We use 200 of them. And we say, rest of it is for someone else. It's too advanced for me. I don't need it. So all the effort Microsoft has put in doing all this is completely wasted. So what are we supposed to do as a user or a service provider on the other side is start with those features and go backwards, learn those features. Microsoft may not have documented the use cases which originally started, but with little bit of application of mind, you can think of your business context, think of where it fits in, and now you decide who is going to benefit from it, go to them, educate those users, and standardize that process. That is called delivering value. That's called generating value from technical features, mapping it to business. Now, who will do this? We will look at a little later. We have to form an efficiency team. This is neither a job of only IT or only HR. We have to form a team of cross-functional people within the organization who will take the onus of learning features, finding business scenarios, mapping it to them, standardizing them, and then publicizing it across the organization. So how to educate thousands of people with thousands of features? These are some of the approaches. Impact has to be long or short term, or audience can be large or small. Now the ones in gray are, the, this one, traditional one, doesn't work at all because it's too little, too late. This is good to generate excitement. This is the most important thing, where we don't wait for everyone to learn things. We provide them applied learning in a language they understand. And then we can look at individual activities of specific people, how they're using Office, and then say, don't do it this way, do it this way. And we can now quantify benefits. There will be resistance to adopt. But when it comes to Office, whatever I just showed you in Word, are you going to use it or not? I just showed you a very little small thing. If I had time, I would have shown you 12,000 things. But the issue is, if you find something eminently useful to you, you will use it. There is no concept of change management required. If it is compelling, if it's so nice, who is the beneficiary? Me. Then the organization. Then there is no change management required. People have to be told that they are wasting their lives by not knowing office. It's not Microsoft's benefit. It's not IT's benefit. It is not HR's benefit. It is their life burning every day. So stop burning and start utilizing. That's a motivating thing to do. There is no change management required. So don't bother about wasting time in change management. All that you have to do is make it compelling. People will use it wholeheartedly and lovingly. So this is not the solution. This is in pockets. And there is flat hierarchy here. The solution is people, whether they use it well or not well, they use Office. So all the components of Office 365 integrate with Office by design. So start with Office and then branch out into other aspects. That's a much easier way of deploying and consuming Office. Because you start with what people are familiar with and then expand to what they are not familiar with. I'm not going to go into case studies. Just one case study where I did some optimization exercise. Look at what people are doing. Give them a better way and count before and after. This is the kind of impact. I don't have time to show you how this was done, but you have to trust me. These are not fictitious numbers. So this kind of impact is possible from Office itself is not known. So ignorance about the real potential of Office is the real bottleneck. That's what I would say. Now this is a common problem. What do you do? I want to show a slide called My Customers. So many logos lying around like that. What do I do? Tell me. I'll spend half an hour of my precious life aligning them and cropping them. <laughs> If my boss is standing behind looking at me doing this for one hour, boss won't fire me. Because boss also does the same thing. <laughs> when it comes to office, there is no boss, no subordinate. It's not even an epidemic. See, Ebola is growing. What do we call it? Pandemic. Pandemic means out of 7 billion people, 1 million have it in few countries. If everyone has a disease, it's called normal. <laughs> So we have to consider that normality as abnormality and take it as an opportunity and they will, you will not be able to recognize yourself. It's that powerful. So just to give you a quick example, I select all these. Obviously, this is not my job. PowerPoint should help me. So I go to format. I go to picture layout, which I'm sure you have seen 1,000 times but ignored it because you thought it's too advanced for me. 
and then you click on one button there and then this guy will arrange everything. When was the last time you clapped? Come on. <laughs> you're not clapping. You're not clapping for me, you're clapping for the next 20 minutes you're going to save when you're arranging pictures. <laughs> now wait, one problem here. Some logos are square, so they fit. Some logos are not square, they don't fit. So you have to go here, you have to go to picture tools, you have to go to crop and then say fit, then it'll fit. But then there are many logos like this. Unfortunately, for some reason, when you multi-select, this is off. <laughs> now you're stuck. Now I have so many logos, what do I do? That is the time you extend office and write a macro. You don't write a macro when just because something is repetitive. If something is repetitive, that means your method is inefficient. But when you have explored it, found the best method, and then that is repetitive, then you write a macro, which I've already done, which you can download from my blog. I'll give you the link later. So I just run the macro, and then it does the job. That is called efficiency. Do you understand? <laughs> Now, I'm sure there are uh, Google and other competitors out there. I'm not going to show comparative demo, but all you do is whatever I have shown, try to find it there. It's not there, that's simple. So what happens is, Microsoft gives you thousands of features. We say, I don't need all this. We look at 20 of those buttons, our work is getting done. <laughs> because we think this is what I need. Now those competing products you give you what you want. You want 20 buttons, they give you 20 buttons. Life is done. Do you understand? Now why is Microsoft giving you 1,000 more buttons even if you don't want them? Because Microsoft does nothing else to do. They have unnecessary developers sitting there on the bench. They have to put some products. No, they are doing it because you need it. You don't even know that you need it. That is the difference between competitors and Microsoft. Competitors give you what you want and Microsoft gives you what you need. So what is efficiency? It's a completely different mindset. Earlier, if you remember, Microsoft had a nice tagline called Your Potential, Our Passion. Do you remember? Some of the older people would remember this. Now, that was a wrong tagline. Why? Because your potential Microsoft meant customer, our passion Microsoft meant Microsoft's passion to make your life improved. Nothing has changed. People's lives have not got improved because the tagline was wrong. The tagline is your potential and your passion. If you rekindle it, you will become more productive. That's the idea. So to summarize, we have three things which we do in an unstructured manner using Office. We create something, we work together, and we work faster. For all of them, Microsoft has tools. Now, how am I doing this? This is a transition in 2013. If I had not shown you this, you would never have used it. <laughs> And all these are put together in a simple package called Office 365, and if you use this well, you will grow faster. This is also a transition called Oregon. <laughs> so that's all we have time for. I write a blog every day. I call it Efficiency 365. Go and subscribe to it. A lot of good stuff is there. I don't know why this guy doesn't want to show <laughs> my blog, but anyway. And there are two very good networks, Yammer Customer Network and Office 365 Technical Network. You should subscribe to it. There are a lot of good discussion going on, and it will also tell you how to use Yammer more effectively. That's a live great example. So that's all we have time for. Thank you.